So, in these videos, <clears throat> I've been trying to point out the sociological utility of religion. That religion itself is a powerful, especially Christianity, a powerful sociological tool to help organize society. Now, here is Exhibit A along those lines. The powerful sociological utility of Christianity. <clears throat> Going back to 1815, there are only two world superpowers, really. Did you know that? Did you know that? Might not have. Two and a half if you count the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union was really only a world superpower from, roughly speaking, 1945 to, whatever, 92, whenever the Soviet Union broke up. Uh, I think it was 92. I was there, actually, the summer after the Berlin Wall came down. I was in Berlin. Yeah, it was awesome. East Berlin and then West Berlin. Mind-boggling the difference. Mind-boggling the difference. East, West Berlin was like being in Times Square. East Berlin was like, I mean, it was unbelievable. The difference was stark between communism then and capitalism. But, anyways, so, going all the way back to 1815, there are only two world superpowers. England and the United States. And, coincidence of coincidences, those are the two most profoundly Christian nations in the face of this earth. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, England, England is secular. England is secular now, sure. But back in 1815, it was not secular at all. It was one of the most, it was the most profoundly religious nation on the face of this earth. And it was profoundly Christian. And it was the main world superpower from roughly 1815 to the start of World War I. After World War I, you know, the, did you ever hear the phrase, the sun never sets on the English Empire? <clears throat> that's where it comes from. Never heard the phrase? <laughs> okay, you know, listen for phrases more. <laughs> it's a phrase, yeah. What it means is, from 1815, the defeat of Napoleon, uh, the English Navy became the sole military force, the po most powerful military force in the face of the earth, the English Navy. And England basically conquered the globe. The sun never sets in the English Empire meant... Roughly 30% of the, of the world, 30% or so, was English colonies ruled directly by England. That's mind-boggling to think of. Now, in the case of the United States, from 1915 on, from 1945 on, the, the United States was the sole world superpower. But it really kind of started in 1915, but, uh, or just after World War I, but nobody really knew it until the, until the end of World War II. So the two most profoundly religious nations in the face of this earth have basically been running the show for the past 220 some odd years. How is that possible? Well, you got two options. And if you're an atheist, if you're an atheist, you're not going to like one of the options. If you're an anti-theist, you won't like either option. Because one of them points profoundly to the sociological utility of religion. There's, this is not some sort of mysterious coincidence. It cannot be. You say, well, the United States is, you know, has all these resources. So does Russia. So does China. England, in the case of England, it is mind-bogglingly clear that it had something to do with the fact that it was a profoundly religious nation. Why? Because England is a tiny little nation. If you've ever been to England, you, it will blow your mind because you actually experience it firsthand. England is roughly the size of New Jersey. It's a tiny little nation and it ruled the world and actually ruled the world. Unlike the United States, where we have really, really influence on the world, it's much different. They actually ruled it. India was an English colony in 18, started in 1860. England became a colony. India became a colony of England. It was directly ruled by England. So England had a much bigger influence at the height of its power than we do. Much bigger. And it's a tiny little nation with no natural resources. So you only got two options. Blessed is the nation whose God is the, war the Lord. God is sovereign. And like I said, <laughs> anti-theists won't like either option. A atheists won't necessarily agree with that. Okay, fine. Then the other option is there's something inherent in the religion of Christianity itself that allowed both of those societies to organize better streamline their productivity, make full use of their human resources and their intellectual capital, which allowed a tiny little nation to dominate the globe. There's got to be something intrinsic about the religion itself that allowed them to do that. Now that's an obvious no-brainer. 
Because barring that, there's no way the actual history of the world could go down like that. <clears throat> like I said, there's only two options. God is actually God and bless those countries. As the Bible said, blessed is a nation <clears throat> whose God is the Lord. Most Christians go, yeah, amen, that's exactly what happened. Atheists won't say that. But anti-theists won't be able to explain the phenomenon of the actual history of the world. Because that's really what happened. England ruled the world from 1815 to 1915. England was the sole reigning superpower, more so than the United States. And then World War I, you know, England lost a lot of prominence. And by the end of World War II, England was down to England, basically the England we know today. And then the other sole superpower was the United States. Now, if there isn't a sovereign God that orchestrated that and blessed those two nations, then there is something intrinsic to the religion of Christianity itself that allowed those nations to streamline their resources properly and make effective use of their human and their intellectual capital so that they could dominate other societies. Is it some sort of mysterious coincidence that once Christianity took root and religion became, uh, Europe became in fact Christendom? Did you guys know that, by the way? That Europe for a period of time was known as Christendom. Why? Because it was all Christian. Is it some sort of mysterious coincidence that when that took root, that's when Europe started, you know, really, really, really pulling way ahead of the pack in terms of intellectual achievement, science. You know, atheists will tell you, well, it's a scientific revolution. Yes, but handmade into the scientific revolution somehow is the religion of Christianity. There's something intrinsic to the religion of Christianity that allowed for the, for the marshalling of intellectual capital in ways that are really, really profoundly productive. That's what I'm trying to say. Evidence of that fact is that for the last 300 years, or over the last 200 years, since 1815, there have only been two world superpowers, both of which were profoundly Christian, profoundly religious. That's actually really powerfully convincing evidence of at least the sociological utility of religion. Now, like I said, most Christians say that's because God is God. Most Christians say that. That's because God had a hand on both nations. The Lord shed his grace on thee. You ever hear that song? About the, you never heard that song? It's pretty famous. God shed his grace on thee from... No, you never heard that? All right, well, it's pretty well known. You know, do a little more research. You never heard it? It's pretty famous. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. So, there you have it. Stark evidence of the actual history of the world, of the sociological utility of religion, Christianity in particular. And as far as I'm concerned, it's really powerfully convincing. And further evidence is the fact that when Europe became Christian, case closed, we are now Christendom, they started to dramatically pull ahead of the rest of the countries in the world. Again, it's evidence of two things. If you're an anti-theist, you won't like either option, but it's evidence of, all, of two options. Christianity itself produces something intrinsic to Christianity that helps produce cohesion in society to make use of their intellectual and their human capital in ways that help them to dramatically outproduce other cultures. That's what someone like Adam Friended would say. And he'd be essentially correct. Because that's true, irrespective of whether God exists or does not exist. That's obviously true. And you can analyze the content of Christianity and understand why it would be intrinsic to Christianity. There's a lot of precepts buried in Christianity. And they aren't all anti-science. Some of them are actually pro-science. There's a whole idea in there that God is reasonable and rational and can be ferried out and discovered can be contended with, as Jacob did in the wrestling with the angel, that God can be, can be contended with, dug into, explored, and that answers will be produced. That's the whole genesis of the scientific process right there. The idea that we live in a rational universe with a reasonable creator had helped handmade in the scientific process. I didn't explain that very clearly, but that's, I'll go into that in another video. But there you have it. There's powerful evidence as far as I'm concerned of the sociological utility of religion. Religion helps societies marshal their resources in profoundly useful ways. Exhibit A, the most religious society at the time, England, 
the most profoundly Christian society at the time ruled the world. And it's a tiny little nation. So, did they have it? That's... Yeah, case closed. That's the case closed. All right, well, whatever. You can argue. You can argue if you want. Amen.